Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr, and I'm here to talk about uh, the struggles and the consciousness of an INFJ. Uh, keep being asked if INFJs have it difficult, and I keep being asked uh, how I experience being an INFJ and how I deal with the struggles associated with being an INFJ. A common struggle brought up is, of course, high sensitivity in a sense. Uh, INFJs become more quickly overstimulated by uh, their environment and by things around them. Beyond this, uh, INFJs are sensitive in relationships and in dealing with other people on average. We have very, very high expectations on ourselves when it comes to how we deal with and how we treat other people. INFJs are one of the four leader types, and INFJs will find themselves uh, in some way or form showing leadership and uh, becoming important and having some degree of impact on the people and the groups around them. Being a feeling judging type for an INFJ is a lot about being a person that makes promises and that has obligations to other people and that feels that they have a duty to serve others or to help others or to have an impact on other people in some way or form. At the same time, INFJs really do not care much for mainstream popular opinions or what other people think or what values are popular in society. INFJs can in many ways have opinions that are quite aloof, quite unusual for their times. And often they make pay no regard to what the mainstream thinks or what the group thinks. It's not even interesting from a philosophical standpoint. It's said that INFJs absorb other people's emotions, but not so much as in a sense that we spend our time thinking about what other people are feeling. Actually, to this, INFJs can be quite socially oblivious. INFJs care a great deal about how they impact other people, but they do not care so much about what other people think. And on the surface, INFJs are hard to read. Uh, they don't show necessarily how much they feel about you or how much they care about you. We are more silent in our care and how we care about other people. An interesting thing about INFJs is that we have uh, far from an idealized view of reality. We have a very, very pragmatic view of reality. To us, reality is a very, in many ways, cold and logical and uh, real and tangible and concrete existence. Reality feels very, very vivid to us. It's not something we play with. It's not something we idealize. It's not something we play with in the imaginative way. If we find out something is true about reality, then we do not alter our perspective of reality to fit with our views. We do pay quite high regards to reality and uh, to the information from extroverted sensing. We do not question our five senses. We trust blindly in what we see and hear. But as long as we do not see or hear, that's when we have the freedom to speculate, to envision, to theorize, to come up with different examples and to form theoretical models of reality. So often INFJs are focused on the reality that we can't see, the reality that is hidden before our eyes, the things around us that we can't know simply by touching, feeling or trying it out in reality. Our perspectives are, in so many ways, theoretical. And so, uh, to have a theory and to find that it goes completely against reality or that it has no basis in reality, to form a deduction or speculate about something and to find out it's not true, that's a difficult thing. Something interesting about INFJs is also that we are, in many ways, hyper-rational about relationships. How we understand people, how we understand other relationships, how we understand everything around us. It's uh, according to strict uh, logical laws. It's, uh, it's following strong mechanical uh, experiences. And that's also why INFJs can hyper-rationalize relationships or rationalize not engaging or uh, pursuing a relationship to begin with. If we think that it's impossible in reality or that it's too uh, complicated, or uh, then we don't pursue it. I think a lot of time INFJs hide how they really feel and what they really want because they are so burdened by this strictly mechanical view of reality.
Like we know deep down what we want, but we don't even consider it. We don't even tell ourselves we want it. We try so hard to maintain this strong, cool, analytical facade or to uh, maintain our feet on what's realistic, what's objective, what's logical, what makes sense. We're sensitive, we're feeling, we're romantic types, but we are in many ways uh, stuck in this objective, rational reality with this all these strong laws, all these musts, all these uh, bur all this bureaucracy, all these rules we are so aware of, so uh, bound under. And through this, this is a massive anxiety for the INFJ to wear, to experience, to be aware of. But we can't really pretend that it doesn't exist either. I think something INFJs have to learn is to share how they feel, share what they want, even when they know it's illogical, even when they know it doesn't work. Because so, time, so many times we will convince ourselves out of not doing it because it won't work out anyways, while even understanding, because it's so important to understand that uh, even if it's illogical, even if it's not going to make work out, or even if it's not uh, pragmatic enough, uh, it's still there, it's still worth getting out there, it's still worth admitting to yourself and to uh, the other person or to uh, what, what you want, to, to yourself. For the INFJ, I think a real issue is uh, we say yes far too often in a sense. We uh, take on too many promises, we promise too much uh, to too many people also often out of a genuine desire of to do good and to, uh, out of a genuine desire not to want to disappoint other people. But I think like while an ISFJ would promise something they knew they could give, the INFJ sometimes pro uh, promises things they don't have yet, the things that they can't possibly obtain. And then INFJs work so hard to bend the world of reality to fulfill these promises. It's rare for an INFJ to promise something they already have, but it's uh, more, much more common for an INFJ to promise something they will get, or that they want to get, or something they think they will be able to get at some point. So that also means that if you want to ask for something impossible or something very difficult, don't go to an ISFJ, go to an INFJ. Still, the only way to be able to do this, the only way to be able to honor promises, to fulfill obligations, to be able to deliver on the impossible, you need a great deal of creativity, you need to uh, have a great deal of uh, optimism, you need to have a great deal of hope, and often you need people to believe in you, you need people to uh, hope for you, you need people to uh, be as enthusiastic, as, uh, <laughs> to give you that enthusiasm that can help you make it possible. And that's why I think that all INFJs need a muse. Well, everyone needs a muse. Everyone of us, no matter what our personality type is, needs somebody that can ask the impossible and that can also give the impossible. Because I believe that there's only so much that we can do on our own. We can, of course, do a great deal on our own. We can do much on our own. But uh, I think also, and this is an INFJ issue, a big one, I think that INFJs on their own don't feel like they need that much. INFJs can live very spontaneous lives. Uh, they on their own they wouldn't need anything at all. They could live in a um, they could live like monks uh, without anything at all. But INFJs keep on mistaking contentedness for happiness. It's not the same to feel nothingness as it is to feel happiness. And because I have friends that push me on, friends that encourage me, and friends that uh, get me out of myself, I also realize how much happier I am when I'm not living that monk life, when I'm not uh, uh, living that emptiness life, where I'm not uh, a fox Buddhist, if you might. INFJs can be so blind to opportunities because of our firm grasp on reality we can we can be stuck on what we're seeing right now we miss all the patterns we miss all the opportunities and also we realize uh, because we want to wait often we are so often hesitant to take on new opportunity because we go like oh i'll wait a few minutes and see what happens but often that's enough time for the opportunity to disappear in itself and i'm not saying an infj should be an opportunity chaser 
No, I'm saying that uh, when an opportunity emerges, sometimes at least once a day, take a leap of day faith, and then the rest of the time, that's okay. It's okay not to just decide for yourself what your comfort zone is, what you feel comfortable taking on, what you feel is too difficult to take on. And set the boundaries. It's so important to set boundaries because INFJs consider how many promises you want to make to others and who you want to promise yourself to. Accept that you can't help any everybody, but accept that there's always somebody that can help everybody if they want to. Follow that Dumbledore quote of uh, there is always help at Hogwarts for anyone who is ready to ask for it. And don't see yourself as the one person that has to carry everyone's burden. Don't be a martyr and don't be harsh to yourself. I see so many INFJs that beat down on themselves because through this, INFJs, I've noticed, can't get angry at the world around them. What I've noticed with INFJs is that whenever something goes wrong in reality, when other people spill beer on us or when things, when people step on our feet, we get angry at ourselves. We get angry because we put our feet where somebody else might step on it. And... Uh, while this sometimes gives us power and the power to change our decisions and to change our worldview to fit with reality, it also sometimes wears down on us and it can trick us into having holding on so much anger inside of ourselves. Sometimes humor the philosophical question of am I actually angry at myself or am I maybe angry at other people but not ready to face that? Not because it's true or not, because Truly, it is just a perspective, but because it can help you get some distance to how you feel about yourself. And this one, this last one is so important. Wisdom is not hurtful. The part of wisdom might hurt, the part of wisdom might be difficult and arduous, but the wisdom in itself heals, it gives us freedom, it gives us satisfaction, it gives us power. So uh, don't assume that wisdom will hurt you or that it will make you empty or that it will make you sad or depressed. Accept that wisdom, true wisdom, will always heal you. Anyways, this was a little different uh, from my usual videos, but I hope that you all like it and I hope that uh, I can help people by making videos like this sometimes. And for now, thank you all for tuning in and I hope to see you guys in the next video.